Any government, Malawi government inclusive, usually put the welfare of its people at the heart of its development agenda. Today, I want to take you through a journey of some of the policy reforms that the Malawi government has undertaken with that specific objective. Then I will look at those policy reforms in terms of whether they have really made the intended impacts and look to the future. What is it that we can still do more to make sure that indeed agriculture, which is the mainstay of this particular economy, contributing 40% of the GDP and employing over 80% will actually look like. So, really, I titled this talk as policy reforms towards an agricultural market-oriented transformation. As I alluded to, Malawi has gone through policy evolution, specifically in the agriculture sector, since 1980s, under the World Bank and the IMF structure adjustment programs. In 1987, the marketing of smallholder crops, except cotton and tobacco, was liberalized. In 1990, what they call the Special Crops Act was actually amended to allow smallholder farmers to grow barley tobacco for the first time in Malawi. In 1994, Agriculture Produce, or called Marketing Regulation Act, was again revoked, and the ban on private exports on agriculture produce was lifted. In 1995, the pricing of smallholder crops was liberalized. And this was also accompanied by some structural changes that had to take place with ADMAG. For your information, before the marketing-oriented economy in Malawi, Adimak was the sole buyer of smallholder produce, and more or less was also a sole seller of most of the agriculture imports. The question then remains, have really these policy reforms made any impact? It may be difficult to actually analyze each of those particular policy reforms. Suffice to say, Indeed, we have some observed impacts. We have seen in the agricultural sector, smallholder farmers taking a big share in terms of the crop production, and most importantly, the barley production. We have also seen in Malawi economy, agricultural economy, a more diversified farming system, where cassava, sweet potato, and a lot of legumes have actually grown in hectare, in production as well, but also, we have seen competition where some small traders have come in in the economy. Some other input uh, traders have also come in the economy, basically breaking in the monopoly that Adimac used to enjoy before the market-oriented economy. What are some of the things that, perhaps having said that, to me, the question that I think we had in mind was, uh, yes, has this transformation policies led to food security, have they also led to cash for the smallholder farmers? To me, my analysis says that it, to a certain extent, maybe yes, but I think when it comes to cash, I think there are still challenges. Why? Yes, government had put all these good policies, but I think the issue to me, it was not accompanied by the appropriate training capacities of these particular farmers as to how they should actually operate in the new environment. For your information, under the decentralized economy, government used it to set prices already for smaller farmers. Adimac was at the doorstep of each and every farmer. You just need to walk a very few distance, then you'll be able to sell your produce. And yet, here are the good policies, but farmers really, to me, were not given the necessary capacity as to how they can actually operate in that particular economy. The other, I think, structural issue, negative structural issue that took place in 1992 when we were moving to democracy was the collapse of what we called smallholder agriculture credit system. Even as we speak now, smallholder farmers have no access to financial capital. 
the commercial banks, they still consider smaller farmers as very risky to lend them any money. When I look at this particular farmer here, it's very beautiful crop. And that's why I'm saying that part of these reforms indeed have transformed the agriculture sector. Look at this beautiful crop here. I feel pain when this particular same farmer, a vendor like me, coming from town, I go to the village, and the farmer will be asking me, at what price are you buying my crop? Can you imagine that? Is it me who should set the price? Or the farmer should know, this is what I've put in this particular crop, and this is the price that I need to get. This is the scenario that I think we have seen over these years. Yes, very good policies, but yet we don't have given the farmers the capacity. The capacity to identify the markets, the capacity to determine even a price of what is it that they will be selling their Padua crops. Next 50 years, what I see as the future of the agriculture sector, it really relies on organizing the farmers. This morning, I've had two presentations about the need for institutional capacity. Here, I'm talking about institutional capacity of smaller farmers. Some people argue to say, well, really can smallholder farmers drive this part of the economy? Mind you, 80% of our farming community are smallholder farmers. Yes, they can be smallholder farmers as individuals, but they can be big farmers if they get organized. I just wanted to give you an example of some of these initiatives that already take place in Malawi. This is in Chinji Cooperative. Farmers organizing themselves, packing the, their, their produce themselves ready for a market. This is the kind of the agriculture economy that I would want to see in 2064. I talked about financial capital. We can really not talk about transforming the agriculture sector without widening access of financial resources to smallholder farmers. They need money so that they can invest in the quality input. Because of part of the productivity that needs to be achieved is through farmers realizing that, yes, there's, there's value in investing in buying high-quality high seed. They need to realize that if they plant 10 seedlings of rice per station, they're losing instead of them just planting two seedlings per station. Why should they waste money to put into all these other seedlings? We need a smallholder agriculture system that is well capacitated, that is well resourced, both in terms of software, but in terms also of financial resources. It is my vision that by 2064, the Malawi agriculture sector will truly be a means of wealth creation in the rural economy. It will indeed be truly a means for food sovereignty, not food security. I hear a lot of people talk about poverty alleviation. I would rather talk about wealth creation. This is the Malawi that we wanted to see in 2064. Thank you for your attention.